Last week, we struggled to get to uh, Matthew chapter 10, or at least I did. Um, doing better this evening, though. Um, let's start in Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. The Lord is sending out the apostles. Uh, a couple of different gospels have this account, some with a little less detail that send out the 12. Um, Luke mentions a, a, a time when 70 were sent out, whether it's the same time or a different time. It's very much the same thing with the same instructions and everything, and we'll kind of look a little bit at that this evening. But they've come together. The Lord has shown them that there, there's, there's a harvest, that there's a great need. But there was a need for, the harvest was plentiful, but there was a need for the laborers. And pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out the laborers. And then he sends them out. The, the harvest is still plentiful, and there are still a need for laborers, and that would still include us. No matter what, no matter how long you've been around, the Lord can still use us. And just, just a quick reminder, Moses was 80 years old when he saw the burning bush in the desert. And he sent him to, to deliver the Israelites. So God, God's not on our clock, as we talked about this morning. He's on his. So he can still use you. He uses those that are willing. Amen. Chapter 10, verse 1. And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. The names of the 12 apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of De Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, um, Levi, Le, whose surname is, is Thaddeus. I can never pronounce that name right. Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. This is quite a different and diverse crew. You have a zealot and a tax collector, fishermen, and, and everybody, just all, all mixed in there. Might not have been the people that we would choose to, to send out on our behalf, but these are the people that were willing to, to go and follow the Lord. They said, here I am, send me. As Don and I talked a little after service last Sunday about these, these apostles here, these ones that were sent out, even Judas who did not, never did, or never would believe, was sent out and was a partaker in what the Lord was doing here. He gave this power to them to go out and, and to heal the sick and do all these things. He gave the power to them in their time. He gives us the privilege of coming to him and asking him to do these things in our time. But even Judas Iscariot was a partaker in this. And as we had our conversation, Don brought up the... The, the fact that the Bible talks about those who says, you know, Lord, we cast out demons and did all these things in your name. And the Lord says, depart from me. I never knew you. And here's an example of that. And what a good one. And that was a good conversation. The Lord sent these guys out and he, he, he sends them out with this power to go and, and, and show the gospel, if you will. We may not do the same things, but we still have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, and we have the power through the Holy Spirit to live the gospel in front of people and to be that witness so that people can see the Lord in that work in our lives. Verse 5 says, These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter the, cities, the city of Samaria, of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts, nor bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs, for a worker is worthy of his food. Whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy and stay there till you go out. And when you go into a house, into a household, greet it. 
If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you nor hear your words, when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. He sends them out to do these things, to do this work, to do this ministry, to go into these different places to preach the kingdom, accompanied with these signs that he gives them to do. He says to them, freely you've been given, have received, so freely give. I wonder if we're always, I know sometimes I'm not, that free to offer up the grace of God. Because I catch myself sometimes and it's like there was a situation where I could have, could have been more gracious, where I could have freely given that grace that I've been given, where I could have freely given that mercy that I've been given. And I find myself sometimes having to go back, repent, and, and, and redo it. You know, like these guys, oh man, I didn't, I didn't really give freely in that city, so I need to go back and, and start all over. I need to go back to this person. I need to go back and say, you know what? I didn't really do what the Lord put on my heart. I didn't really give you the grace that you deserved in this. Freely we've been given grace and mercy in our lives. Do we offer that freely to those around us? Freely we've been given of Jesus Christ. Freely we've been given of the Holy Spirit. Freely we've been given His peace. Freely we've been given His joy. Freely we have been given salvation. How free are we to give that back? How free are we to spread that around? Wouldn't you like to be like that commercial where a guy riding a motorcycle around there and all the money's blowing off? You know? Eh, just, you just go cruising. It doesn't matter, man. I made the money. Let it blow around all over the place. You know, and they don't show what the people do after he passes because you know they're scrambling out there in the streets picking up that cash. You know? But I see that, I see that as, as, in a sense, in a picture of us as Christians as we go. Just kind of cruising along and, and grace and mercy and peace and joy. And love of the Lord just blowing off all over the place. Us just cruising along, not a care in the world. Just let, let it go, man. Let it blow off. I'm not going to run out. Jesus didn't tell these guys, go out there, but be really careful about who you give this stuff to because there's only a certain amount. Praise God that His grace does not run out. I don't know about you guys, but I know where I'd be in trouble. His mercies are new every morning. That this love and this joy don't stop, don't end. Spread it out. Just let that, that love of the Lord just blow all over the place. Jesus says, freely you've been given, man. Don't hang on tight to this. Don't worry about it. It's not going to run out. And yet, we, we, we tend to want to kind of hoard things for ourselves, the different parables about the talents and stuff like that. The one guy says, I got this. I'm keeping it. The other one says, hey, you know what? Let me go out and, and, and spread this around a little bit and see if I can get some more. And we see that grace and that mercy and those things of the Lord begin to flow through us and we become that, just that channel. There's rivers of living water as the Holy Spirit works through us. Freely we've been given. Freely we should give. It's not ours. It's His. We don't have to worry about running out. I don't think you're going to get up tomorrow morning and have the Lord tell you, you know, I'm a little short on grace today, so you better be careful. Freely give it. Freely let it go. And I, the, just that picture of that guy riding that motorcycle and that money blowing all over the place. You know, it's just, there's that Christian, man. You got the Lord. Freely. He's not going to run out. Spread the grace. Spread the love. Spread the joy. Spread the peace. I think about that joy that we have that may not always be the happiness with the, of the circumstance, but the joy that's there in spite of everything else that goes along. And that joy that, that we have that is from the Lord. 
that we can bring into a situation that we can spread that joy around, can't we? That we can come into that situation with the peace of God in our hearts and in our lives and spread that peace of God around in that situation. Just that freely. Go out and do these things. Don't worry about it. You're not going to run out. You don't have to be stingy about the things of the Lord. Spread them around. He said to them in verse 9, Provide provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts, nor bag for your journey, nor two tunics or sandals, nor staff, for a worker is worthy of his food. Don't worry about the provision. Now, that doesn't mean if you're, if you're planning a trip, don't, you know, don't pack some stuff to take along with you. I mean, that, that's not good stewardship. That's not why. And that's not what he's telling him. He said, don't worry about it because the Lord's the one that's going to provide for this mission that they're going on. If he's going to send you out, he's going to provide for it. And the worker is worthy of, of, your, of the wage. The food's going to be there. The place to stay is going to be provided. The, the staff, the tunic, the things that you have need of in are going to be there and be provided for you. Don't worry about it. Oh, Lord, you know, I would go, but I don't have enough gold. Lord, I would go, but I can't find my staff. Lord, I would go, but I only got one tunic. What are those things that, we ought, that, that stop us from going and doing that thing that the Lord's trying to send us out to do? What provision are we short of? You see the idea here that where God guides... God provides, doesn't he? Go and go do it. We don't have everything. So what? You'll find it along the way. It'll be provided for you as you go. I've never waited until I got completely prepared to go and do something for the Lord to go and do it. And yet the things that I've needed along the way have always been there. Be a wise steward, but don't be worried about it. Of course, the other side of that is true too. The Lord, the Lord will, will stop the provision from being there if He doesn't want you to go. He can close doors in that way too. We were, we, while well, we were in Albuquerque and, and, and doing the, I was in the shepherd school and we were working with the, with the, the people in the uh, school of ministry there and getting a group ready to take a mission trip over to... Uh, I forget where it was, but over in Africa someplace. And we were working with them and making contacts with the, with the people over there and just kind of bringing this whole thing together. And the thing it was for April and I to go and lead this team, we had to have a certain amount of money together for plane tickets and everything in order to, 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 to go. And we were there and we were praying and we were doing what we were supposed to do and and. and getting people ready and the people in our team had money coming in and everything was there and the Lord was providing for all of that and it came the day that they said all right pay up time for the plane tickets we didn't have any money and so I I went to one of the pastors at the church and I said well you know if you guys are willing to kind of front this and and see and and do that then you know we're willing to to go and continue on they said no 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 if the Lord hasn't provided now, then, you know, we can get somebody else to take the group and to lead the group. And we were very disappointed because I wanted, we wanted to go. But you know what? That provision wasn't there. So you go do something else. That door closed, but another one opened. And shortly after that, we got the call to go to Yarnell where we started a church there. And watch the Lord provide for that there where there was nothing. I'd tell you that story, but we'd be here all night. And so on and so on and so on. Where the Lord's leading you, the provision will be there. He said to go into this into the cities and the towns that you go in. Go in there and say, hey, who's got a place where we can stay? Go and inquire of who's worthy. Who's got a place where we can stay? Yeah, man, we'll take you in. Come and stay over here at our house. Then go and stay there. If they welcome you openly and receive what you have, then let your, your peace be on them. If they say, you know what, yeah, we think you guys are kind of flaky and you hit the road, then take your peace and go. Go someplace else. The Lord will make the provision. The place will be there. The door will be open. And trust Him. 
You don't always have to call ahead to make the reservation. Yeah, it depends. Do as the Lord's leading you. But the Lord is the one that's going to provide. The Lord is the one that's going to open the doors. If the household is worthy, let your peace be come upon it. But if not, then let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you nor hear your words, when you depart from that house or, that, or, or city, shake off the dust from your feet. This idea of shaking the dust off from your feet. You, they came into the town, they came into the place, they came into the, the city and they didn't want to hear it. We read about when Jesus and the, and the boys got to the other side of, of the Sea of Galilee there in, in Decapolis over there and, and the, they cast, he cast the demons out of, out of the demoniac and he went into the pigs and he all went in the water and the people of the town came out there to see what happened. Went, wow, that was really something. You got to leave. They didn't want no part of Jesus because he ran off their whole livelihood there. There are those that we come across, I'm sure you all know this, that really don't want to hear what we have to say. It doesn't do you any good to grab them by the collar and shake them because it's not going to rattle it into them. It can be frustrating, can't it? Especially when it's somebody that is there in your life day after day, a co-worker or someone, and you're trying to share the love of the Lord with them. And you may have conversations back and forth and it can just drive you nuts. I don't understand why they don't get this. I've even seen people get so flustered by this that they even get angry and start arguing. That doesn't work either. You're not going to argue somebody into the kingdom that way with your anger. He says, you know, hey, come and present it. Come and offer it. Here it is. It's free for you to take. The Lord is offering salvation freely, generously. It's yours to take. All you got to do is say yes. All you have to do is say yes. And they don't receive it. And sometimes the reaction is, is more than just no thanks, isn't it? These guys here, as we'll jump over and read in another place, or as we'll read on here, these guys here got more than just a no thank you. There was persecution that came along with that. But the idea is, is, you know what, If, if if they don't want to hear it, okay, shake the dust off. I'm done. And go on about your way. If you happen to circle back around, if there's another time sometime later when their their heart's more open, then share the gospel again. As Christians, we need to be careful, I think, sometimes because what we, we there's a tendency to want to disciple unbelievers and getting into all these deep theological things. Well, the first thing and, and the most important thing is that they accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And until they do, stick to that point. Because the rest of it really doesn't matter. You get saved and then you grow. You get born again and then you grow. And then you begin to make disciples. They have to be converts before they can become disciples. Shake the dust off. Let it go. But keep praying. Lord, keep working on them. Lord, show me when when there's an open door, an opportunity to minister. I've had several times those people that say no thanks and worse. All right. Fine. Talk to you later. You go on about your life and you do your thing and you live Christ before them. And I've had those same people come back and say, hey, um, you know some of that Bible stuff, don't you? Oh, yeah. What does it say about this? Answer the question. And then tell them that Jesus died on the cross for their sins. Okay, okay. And then wait till the next time. Because they come back around. The Lord will bring, bring it back. But when they don't want to hear it, don't force it. Don't force the issue. Let it go. I've seen, I've seen people that will say a sinner's prayer just to get the guy off their back. You know, and there's no sincerity in that. Shake the dust off. He says, Assuredly, I say to you, in verse 15, it will be more tolerable 
for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. The picture is, is those that are there on that day of judgment and the, the realization that Jesus Christ truly is Lord of Lord and that they blew that opportunity, that they, someone came and shared Jesus and offered them that gift of salvation from the Lord that shared the gospel and they said no to be there and to realize that they blew it. It's harder for somebody that knows the truth and won't accept it in that time than somebody that didn't know it. And oh, well, you know, I mean, the end result's the same. But in that day, say, man, you know what? That guy that I work with, he told me that time after time after time, and I would not receive it. What a, what a thing to face on Judgment Day, that it was there and you knew it. Verse 16, he says, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my, my sake as a testimony to them and to, be, and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. Now brother will deliver up brother to death, and father his children, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. When they, per when they persecute you in these cities, flee to another. For assuredly, I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? Therefore, do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. He goes on from verse 16 and, and, and <clears throat> And the instructions there for them, and he's telling them what might happen to them, but he seems to be becoming prophetic in this. And, and laying out there to the church of the persecution that would come. And we know that, 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 that these guys right here, these twelve, with the exception of Judas, were taken before governors and kings and gave their testimony. That they were persecuted, that they were put to death, that they died for him. We know that that... that Brother against brother, for those who make a stand for the Lord. And in the times of the Inquisition and even places now where there's persecution and Christians being put to death. Brother against brother. Child against parent. Parent against child. And that division that comes. Jesus says, don't think that I came to bring peace but a sword. And it will be those of your own household. That will turn against you. Such, such a division can be there. In those countries we see, uh, particularly in, in others, but particularly in, in those strict Muslim countries, if someone gives their life to the Lord, if a, if a Muslim converts to Christianity, they can be put to death. Probably more often than we know. Definitely disowned. No longer able to work. No longer able to live in the house, in their house. They're, they're, they're put out completely and disowned by everyone and driven off. It's not something that used to happen way back when. I'm sure Dan in missions and everything, you see, you see stuff like that now. I don't know how it is with, the, with some of the Indians and some of their cultures, but I'm sure that they, they push people away too. We've all experienced it, I'm sure, in some regard, in some ways. I know the guys that I hung around with when I got 
before I got saved, didn't want to hang around with me too much more after I got saved. Oh, yeah, they wanted me to come back, but, you know, they didn't want me to bring Jesus. <laughs> I couldn't, couldn't go without him. There's separation, there's persecution, and all of these things to come. The picture there of being sent out as sheep amid, amidst the wolves is a perfect picture. Because they're there waiting, waiting for that weakness, waiting to come and devour. The Bible talks about the enemy being like a, a roaring lion, wandering around seeking who they might devour. You ever watch them, them National Geographic shows? And everything? Them lions kind of go and they kind of get around there and they kind of see who the weak ones are and everything. And then the, 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 the big male lion that everybody's afraid of, he's over there someplace, roars real loud, scares everybody, and then the females grab him. The weak ones, and they, they get them. It's kind of the same thing. He sends them out. He says, but beware. He tells them to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Sometimes we get that backwards. Wise as doves and harmless as serpents. You know? Be wise to the, way, the ways of the enemy and, and his workings. But don't be distracted by them. Don't be afraid of them. Because greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. The Lord's got it covered. He's got us. We're safe in his hands. People will do all sorts of things and all kinds of persecutions and all, all of those things when we make that stand for his namesake. He said, hey, they called me Beelzebub, Lord of the Flies. Said that he was the devil and all that. How much more are they going to come down on you? If they persecuted him, if they took him and they beat him and they nailed him to a cross, how much more are they going to come down on you? If they did that to him, how much more to us? And our history of the church is full of martyrdom to this day. But we can still go step out and trust in the Lord. Remember this morning as we talked about our Heavenly Father and His will being done in our lives, even if that means taking our lives and giving our lives for Christ's sake? Do we trust Him, our infinite loving Father? Certainly we do. So the disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It's enough for the, for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. We go out in Christ's likeness. Again, that term Christian was, was, was given to believers in Antioch, and it wasn't a good thing. Oh, you're just trying to act like Jesus. And we gladly accept that and say, yes, we are. Imitators of Christ. We can't, we're not going to rise up above him, but it's enough for us to be like him. And if they persecuted him, then that persecution will come on us. Verse 26, therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. Don't be afraid of them and what they might do to you. The Lord's got it under control. He knows what's going on. He sees their hearts. And in the end, in the end, unless they repent and come to Christ, they will get what's coming to them. Do not fear them. Let the Lord deal with them. Our job is to follow Jesus and go out there and be Christ-like. <clears throat> Jesus goes on in verse 27. He says, Whatever I tell you in the dark... Speak in the light, and what you hear in, in the ear, preach on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Don't be afraid to speak out. Don't be afraid to, to, to shout the grace of God from the, from the housetops. It's easy for us to come together as Christians with brothers and sisters and, and talk about the Lord and praise the Lord and, and all those things and, and, and sing the hymns and, and share the word and have those discussions. It's a little bit harder when we get out there in the world, isn't it? It 
I walk around at work and I whistle a lot of times. And sometimes I just whistle whatever noise is coming out. It's my own little praise to the Lord. But a lot of times I'm whistling the songs that we sing Sunday. Those praise songs. And every once in a while, somebody hears it and they go, yeah, I know that song. Somebody says, what are you whistling? Oh, you know, it's a song about Jesus. We have opportunities to just have normal, everyday conversations with people. What did you do this weekend? Oh, man, I had a great time at church. Oh, okay. Or why? What was so great about that? You know, man, I, I, got, I got to come together with the, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, and it's a great thing when we can come together and praise Him together. You ought to try it sometime. Come with me. To talk about Jesus just as if He was as real to us as anybody else. To talk about Jesus as if that relationship was as real and important to us as as a relationship with our spouse. I have no doubt that Don's going to be talking about that new great-grandson. Grandson? He'd look at him and smile. Why? Because this is something, something great and something to talk about. What about what the Lord's been doing in your life? It's easy for us to share the praises of God together as a family of believers. It's not always that easy to share those praises with the people out there. But yet they ask us all the time, don't they? So what's been going on with you? Well, the Lord's been doing this. I'm guilty of it. I don't always say the Lord's been doing this. I say, well, you know, this and that. But let's give him the credit for that. Shout it from the, from the housetops. So don't worry about them. All they can do is kill you. What's so bad about that? <laughs> well, they can do it pretty slow. That ain't cool. But that's all they can do. The worst thing they can do is eat you. They can't take away your salvation. They can't touch that. When they're done with you, you're still going to be with Jesus, right? So don't worry about that. Don't worry about them, but rather fear, have respect for the Lord who is able to destroy both the body and the soul in hell. Now that's something to be concerned about, greatly. Not what men think, not what men do, not what the world opinion is. Not that those... Wolves might devour you. Because when they're done, you're, you're going to be with Jesus. Worry about what the Lord's leading you to do. Verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, are you not, are you of more value than many sparrows? Well, that depends on who you talk to. There's some of the, the, the animal activist groups out there. Was it PETA, people eating tasty animals? I agree with that. You know, they may not think so, but our, our father certainly does. So don't worry about them, what men think and they're, what they do. Look how valuable you are to the Lord. Not even two sparrows fall from from the sky without it being His will. He cares for you, the numbers of the hairs on your head. That gets easier as time goes on for some of us guys. But His concern and His the value that He places on us is what we should be concerned about. They are concerned about children today and their self-esteem. And they boast and build them up. Not that that's entirely bad, but they do it falsely. There's, there's no substance to it. And I've, I've seen many times in situations in counseling where somebody just feels useless, worthless, why? Well, because this relationship did that, and those people did this, and they said this, and, and, and the world dumped on them. 
And, and in some of that, they may, may be justified in that thinking because the world can dump on you. But to take them back and to show them who they are in their father's eyes and the value that he places on them. It is far better for us to have Christ esteem than self esteem. Because I'm still a bum, but I'm his bum. And I know what value I have in him. Such great value that he sent his only son to take on my sin and die on, in my place on that cross to pay that price. That's valuable. The parable, the, the pearl of great price. Guess who the pearl is? Me and you. Talking about that one time and I turned to a guy and I said, can I call you Pearl? <laughs> and it stuck. <laughs> but the value that our Father has on us, the value that He places on us, how valuable are you in His eyes? Go out where the Father sends you, trusting as they did in His equipping, giving generously the things of the Lord. He's not given to us sparingly, so give generously. You're not going to run out. Don't worry about making sure you got all the ducks in a row before you go, because He's God of the ducks. And the provision will be there in the direction that He's leading you, in the way that He's guiding you. The door will be open. If you're going the wrong way, the door will be closed. Trust in the Lord. He's sending you out there as lambs among the wolves. Be wise as serpents. Understand the enemy and the world that's coming against you. But don't be afraid. Because the worst thing a wolf can do to a lamb is eat it. And then you get to be in the presence of the Lord. Isn't that our hope? Isn't that our desire? That day that we get to see Him face to face. There's a song that says, I can only imagine, uh-uh. Imagination ain't even getting close. Don't worry about the world and men and what they might do. Shout the gospel from the housetops. Share Jesus with everyone. You won't run out. Love, joy, and peace come from Him. And He gives it freely. And this free gift of salvation, offer it to everyone as often as you have opportunity. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Remember, the value 